The percentage of Americans who claim to have no religious affiliation is now around 21%, according to a 2022 Gallup survey. When the survey first began in the 1950s, that figure was less than 4%. Yet as America becomes less religious, has the country also quietly lost one of its core foundations for social harmony? To explore this question and others, we speak with actress, filmmaker, and author Sam Sorbo. She and her husband Kevin Sorbo from the hit TV show Hercules recently released a new documentary, Irreligious Nation, now available on Epic TV, focused on rediscovering faith and exploring what faith means for a nation. Hey, Sam Sorbo, thanks for being here again. It's always so much fun to talk to you. So you have a new documentary out on Epoch TV, by the way, folks, called Irreligious Nation. Uh, you did it with your husband, Kevin Sorbo. Hercules, remember Hercules, everyone? Uh, and it's it's a great documentary. I watched it. And, you know, of course, it's more like your religious journey. You went to Israel with your family. But it, it, it contains actually some really deep ideas about what religion means to a nation and what religion means to a culture and what you lose when you lose that. Um, I guess first just tell us a bit about kind of what made you want to do this document and then we'll get into, I want to get into some of these points with you. Well, I've always, Israel's been on my bucket list as it is on many people's and so um, we were approached to lead a tour and do this documentary and I just thought, well, this is, you know, sort of the best of all worlds coalescing um, and the idea of doing this, this discovery. So part of the documentary follows another family and they've, you know, we're, we, we are very involved in our faith and in pursuing our faith. And, and that looks like a different thing, uh, than somebody who just says that they're a Christian and maybe goes, you know, the CEO Christians, as we call them, right. Uh, Christmas and Easter only, um, you know, that kind of thing. And so the, so the other family that came with us, uh, you know, there were a lot of people that came with us on the trip, but this other family we kind of focused on because they were sort of trying to get back to roots because they felt that they had lost something of family, something of meaning in their lives. And they didn't know if it was going, if it was religion or if it was something else, but I think they had their suspicions. I think the the patriarch, the father in the family had a suspicion. So he he talked to his family. He said, "I think we want to do this. I think we should go to Israel, and um, and just take a look." And I will say that in our culture today, and in our schools, we are trained to not look. We are trained to look away from spirituality, religiosity. Uh, we're taught to disdain uh, religious values, religious ideas. Um, we we really are trained because we don't study it in school. Therefore, the school being the the um, the, the the representation of education by ignoring the Bible, by ignoring religion, um, teaches us to disdain it. And when you when you put religion forward, like in some schools, they do teach world religions. But by putting all religions out there as equivalent, what you're saying is they have no value because they're all equally valued. And so really, what value do they bring? Eh, some people do that. Who cares? Kind of thing. Hmm. And so on the journey uh, in this documentary, we, we follow this journey and we ask some really pertinent questions, I think. Uh, you know, what do we mean by religion? What, what does it mean to us? It, and that's that's reciprocal, right? What do we mean, and what does it mean to us? Are two different things, um, and and maybe maybe it's important to take a look at that. I have a friend who says our traditions are solutions to problems that we've long since forgotten, hmm. that's and we release and rescind and break our traditions at our own peril. Because just because you've forgotten what the problem was that the tradition solved doesn't mean that problem won't come back again if you, if you break with tradition. And I think that's what we're seeing in our culture today. We've broken with tradition in big, big ways, and we are reaping problems that we've heretofore not experienced in our lifetime, certainly, and in our recent memory as a culture. Hmm. That's interesting. I, you know... 
I, th- I think the problem we're seeing in society these days is, is, is something that we've been dealing with for a few hundred years. Um, you know, going back to like even like the 1600s and especially the 1700s, you started watching what people saw as like human development, uh, new technologies and breakthroughs in science, and basically societies began to change. And maybe as they began to change, culture couldn't keep up with it because culture informed us how to deal with the world as it was for thousands of years and didn't change significantly that much. Uh, But as it changed, basically, culture did not inform us how to deal with the new world that was being created. And there was a weird conflict that started, I think, between these two worlds. And if you look at society today, you know, religion doesn't, maybe it does to an extent, if you look at it just on a moral level, it doesn't teach you how to deal with your smartphone or deal with a car or these types of things. Unless you get down to like the granular, the granular level of like morality, right? And so I, I guess this gets to the point you mentioned where you talked about what does religion mean to you? Because while it may not tell you how to deal with like modern technology per se, it can tell you how to manage your life or maybe manage your, your moral choices when it comes to these things. But I, I know your, your trip to Israel was kind of something a little deeper. You got into like, I think, what religion means to a society as a whole, right? For sure. I'm, I'm going to have to push back a little bit. We have, we have this idea that the Bible is this antiquated book that doesn't apply. I disagree. Yeah. And, and in fact, my children would disagree, which, you know, now I'm thinking about this, like, why do my children think about this? Um, because and, and they the, are, are like very tic- much... These are like TikTok generation kids, by the way. <laughs> you know? yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, and I would say to you that if you read the Bible, it's the only book that reads you, okay? Uh, it's, it's, it's a history book. We disdain it, but it is the best history book that we have. It, has, it is more um, documented, more authentic. It, it, it is closest to the history that it purports to tell, closer than Homer, the Iliad, for instance, uh, among other things. It is a phenomenal history book. And even just as a history book, the stories that it, tell, that it tells, um, if you want to refer to Jordan Peterson... Um, he maintains that the stories in the Bible are truer than true because they are not only true in the sense that they tell the real story, but they tell a greater story. They give a meta narrative. And so to say that the Bible doesn't necessarily apply today because we have TikTok, and so how does it speak to TikTok? I, I would say it absolutely speaks to TikTok because it speaks to the meta narrative. And frankly, TikTok is nothing new. It's a new iteration of an old, old thing. Yeah. Okay? So when you arm your children with the teachings in the Bible, you are arming them against current day culture. You, you might not think that you do if you don't immerse yourself in the Bible enough to know. Um, but I'm here to tell you that it, it does. And so I think that's, that's partly what we got to in the documentary that we did in Israel is we we show that the connection to our roots, because Israel is our roots, and, and especially as a Judeo-Christian culture from America, Israel is very much our roots. But not only that, the current day Israel is, we, we ought to consider in, in a, a very close alignment with our values, and it is this tiny little speck of a nation in amongst a number of, of uh, uh, enemies. The, the, the idea that Israel still exists is ridiculous. By any, by any reasonable standards, Israel would no longer exist. Yeah. There's a supernatural thing that's surrounding Israel that it still exists, that, he, that it ever existed, right? And so that's part of what we explore in this documentary. But I think more importantly, the documentary really delves into personally, from, an, from a personal viewpoint, how do people respond when they when they are faced with actual events in history? Because there's there there are very very few people who are disputing one the existence of Christ, two the the question of whether he was crucified, um, and then three when you're faced with the testimonies of current day people who testify that they saw him after the third day, you you start to go maybe there's something to all of this. Maybe I should. 
maybe this is a bigger story that, that really require really just not requires, but begs, begs me to delve further. And that's, I think that's partly what we want to do with this documentary is inspire people to delve further personally, but also just from let's save this nation point of view, because in, because Jesus was the author of freedom when, when he, he's the first person who said, Hey, people should be free. We, they, they are individually created by a creator and it was through the spread of Christianity. And if you follow the history through the spread of Christianity that we saw freedom being, uh, it was lit sort of like a fire that spread through Europe and that's why we had the cultures in Europe. And you're right. These days, those cultures are waning and, and the spread of slavery is growing. Do you know today we have more slaves than we did under Roman times? That's because the enslavement mentality is growing and pushing back on the Judeo-Christian mentality of you don't enslave people. That's wrong. Now, you'll talk to people who go through our school system and they will tell you it's wrong to enslave people. But they support socialism, which is slavery. Yeah. So, you know, what, what our school system has managed to do is confuse us. So we will say one thing. We think we believe it. But on the other hand, we're ready to enforce something completely different that's completely contrary to the value that we just espoused. <laughs> 